in this cataract session, I am the odd man out, only discussing about the fakic intraocular lenses. But as we discussed, cataract surgery has now become a refractive cataract surgery. And everybody is talking about multifocals and all these things. So you have one option to treat your patient to have a spectacle-free vision. So fakic implant, how to get it right? There are certain criteria, selection, do's and don'ts for all these surgeries. If you do it rightly, then you are bang on. You will get the results. Refractive surgery scenario, you have multiple options, cornea-based surgery, lenticular-based, and combined procedure, like combining LASIK with fakic implants or anything like this. So I won't go much into detail, but these are the spectrum. This is a spectrum of refractive surgery where you can offer your patient a spectacle free vision by means of any other option. Basic indications, basic criteria to have a fakic intraocular lens implant, safe implant. The age is the 18 years, as we discussed in the morning. No age is a no-no kind of thing as far as the refractive surgery is concerned, except, expect, except, except the minimum age of 18. Stable refraction for a year or six months, patient not suitable for corneal refractive, like those who get rejected because of the corneal thickness or keratoconic criteria, you can actually opt for fake implant in those cases. AC depth is a crucial criteria, typically when you are doing pastry chamber implant. So minimum AC depth you should have a 2.8, endothelial count more than 2,000. No other, any corneal or ocular pathology. Three types, anterior chamber, iris support and posterior chamber implants. Angle supported, now nobody uses this. Artisan or Artiflex, yes, these are available, iris fixated, but it has its own set of complications. It has one advantage, basically one size fits all, no other measurement criteria as such major. Extremely versatile design for myopia, hypometropia. In fact, you can do it for aphavic lenses also. Reversibility of fixation. And pupil dilatation is not dependent, not inhibited flick. So the basic disadvantage is surgically challenging, higher chances of endothelial loss, need larger incision, chances of dislocations are there, and pupil picking or distortion is very common in this. Posterior chamber implant we discussed behind the iris, far from the endothelium, so very safe for endothelium, excellent cosmos. Cosmos is you cannot visualize the lens, which again is a point with an iris supported lens. Sulcus located, so so. It's a stable location, easy, removable, and exchangeable. Does not alter any shape or remove tissue. So it's a safe, safe for cornea also. Presently, two companies available, implantable collamer lens by Star and the Care Group, IPCL. Both has a range of around 10 to 20 in ICL and 10 to 30 diopter, plus 10 to minus 30 diopter, with around 6 to 8 cylinder. Online calculation are available. All you need to do is just do the regular measurement as and send the measurements to the company. They will actually customize the lens for you. Pre-op refraction, as I said, objective and subjective is very important. Anterior chamber depth is a crucial stage. Anterior and posterior segment evaluation, K reading and topography, intraocular pressure, again, is a major thing. White to white, crucial thing, whatever norms you follow, but your white to white measurement should be perfect. Specular microscopy. What I do in my practice, we use caliper to have a white to white measurement. Both IPCL and ICL, again the same procedure, mode of insertion, you have to be very safe. Both posterior chamber lens, make it sure that you are opening it on iris diaphragm and then inserting the foot plates inside, behind the iris. Don't try to rotate these kind of lenses. Your angle should be fixed. Try and remove all the viscoelastic possible. Now with this V4C model or this superior optic holes in IPCL, yes, removing visco is much more easier. You need not do any PI in these cases, but depending upon your experience, you can opt for that. Mostly what we prefer is surgical PI in the operative session. Fakic vault is most important. Ideal vault is one to one and a half of corneal thickness. Uh, undersized size, sizing of ICL or IPCL is very important because undersize will raise the, increase the risk of anterior subcapsular opacification. Oversize may push the iris forward and close to angles, again lead to IOP rise and pigment dispersion. So this is the ideal what anything more than 150 to 800. This is the, say, OCT measurement on third day with IPCL and ICL with Centra flow. 
vaulting in both the lenses remains stable. Now, other option like press beep, press biopic IPS is available with uh, care group. So you can treat press biopia or a combination in the only issue with this thing is now with aging, with AC shallow, you don't get that kind of AC depth required for press biopic implant. The press biopic IPCL actually adds a new horizon, no corneal ability, no implants. So advantage is full multifocal vision is there. Pupillary dependency is not there in these cases. Balanced distribution of lines and able to tolerate the same decentration. So this is a surgical procedure where press biopic implant has been inserted. The patient is hyperopic with press biopic. The procedure is same, intraoperative. Try and inject the IPCL very slowly. Let the proximal foot plates open first and then insert the distal one. Let the lens stabilize on iris diaphragm and then insert the foot plates behind the iris. This is how it looks post-operatively. So for key to success in hypo, say, fecic implant is proper selection of patients, accurate measurement, and proper counseling for that patient. Thanks a lot.